Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Esports Hub Talk Show. My name is Campbell. I'm going to be your host for the evening. Paradox has already started off with a little bit of dancing <laughs> over there, rocking the MW3 shirt. So a bit of a throwback from Paradox there. And joining me as well is Tony, of course, who's now rocking the red jersey instead. A different style. Oh, I, I like it, though. But let's introduce the boys anyway. So Paradox, how are you doing, man? The, one of the biggest and best events we've seen in Call of Duty just recently happened, MLG Dallas. We're going to be talking about it later on, but just really quickly, how are you doing, man? I'm doing all right. I'm really excited for the future of this game, and that just hands down one of the best events of all time. I'm still geeking out about it. Yeah, definitely was an insane event. And Tony, how are you doing, my man? I'm doing good, mate. Actually, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm happy. I'm here with that like, paradox. I was tempted to sort of message him and sit in a call with him over the weekend when it was on, just yeah. like for the enthusiasm. I think it had added me. To be honest, anyone who's doing an event, I mean, you're not going to be watching this. But if you are, you need to get him do it, casting your events because he's a lot more enthusiastic and more entertaining to watch than some of the people you've got. Got him <laughs> back, mate. Ooh. There you go. Make sure you get Paradox on those ones. He's a great caster and great analyzer as well. Obviously, comes up with all the research and everything that we do here. He's got all the stuff that you guys need to know. But before we go any further in MLG Dallas, because we have got a guest joining us later on for it, and I think you will have seen it. If you follow us on social media, yes, we have Silly from E United, the captain of the E United roster that went all the way to the finals and had one of the craziest... I would say double best of fives I've seen in Call of Duty and would have been oh, one yeah. of the best comebacks in Call of Duty history if it was able to happen. We don't want to talk about Dallas unless he's there with us because he's got all the lowdown and everything that went down that weekend. But before we go any further with the Dallas talk, let's talk about the Rasta Mania. <laughs> Boom! Rasta time, baby! It's roster mania time. There's so much been going down in the roster mania scene, and we want to start with it. And we want to start with the AM teams, the professional teams, any team that's had a change. And you can let us know. Remember, let us know before our show starts, and we will have a go at talking about it on the show. So let's kick it off straight away then. So we have to talk about it. I mean, Millennium oh, roster man. came out of nowhere. I didn't even expect it. I didn't think it was going to happen. It was crazy to see Infused get rid of the roster that has been with them for so long. You kind of, you look at Marky B and you think he's like a child to Infused. Like, yeah. he's, he's their son. He's, you know, he's grown up with them. He's been a part of them for, I think it was two plus years. And then out of nowhere, they start walking out with Millennium jackets on. And I'm like, what's going on here? So we was only briefly talking about it the show before Paradox, how Millennium don't have a Call of Duty roster mm -hmm. after obviously getting rid of Zeke. And I was like, oh, well, that's it then millennium are probably just going to take a break they're not going to get themselves a spot no millennium money talks and they're able to come and pick up that infused roster so let's talk about it then infused now lose the spot in the cw world pro league obviously they don't have a team for it millennium have taken that team i mean it's a good team though isn't it paradox let's be honest it's a good team. yeah it's a good team it's just for me I'm just shocked. Like, this completely came out of left field for me. And looking at it, I just wonder, like, we've heard rumors of how much money and everything was traded between the sides. I don't really want to get into that. But how, what is the point for Infused here? Like, what was the decision? Was it just something based off of the money? Or, like, what? Cause That's a good question. And I kind of want to ask. I don't understand I wanna... it. Yeah, I want to ask Tony about that. Tony, you, you know, you're an organization only yourself. You pick up rosters. You've had rosters in the past. I mean, if you're in that position where somebody's coming to you with a decent amount of money and says, we want your team, and you know you're going to lose the exposure of the land league because you're not going to be able to pick up a team in time for it. I mean, do you take the money over the fact that you've got one of the best teams in Europe? Bearing in mind, the only team in Europe that's placed the highest at the previous two events. Infuse ain't idiots, are they? Um... The thing is, they're a big organisation. They don't have to just be in COD. They could sure. think, right, we're going to get this amount of money here and then we can put this into maybe another eSport or something like that and we can generate more money for it and make us stronger as a brand. There's nothing that says they have to stand. To be honest, I can't see I can't see them standing in COD for this like, season, you know what I mean? Because there's no yeah. one to pick up. So yeah. then they're either going to go somewhere else, go on holiday, they've just made a lot of money, yeah. or do something else with it. But, Everything's got a price in it, and Millennium ain't short of a couple of quid. Not saying Infused are, but if they come along with they've obviously come along with an offer that makes a lot of sense to them, and good on them, you know what I mean? They've, they've looked after the lads for long enough, and it's it's good for the Infused I mean, boys. Millennium's a big all. Yeah, and for me as well, I think with the Millennium organisation, this is the type of teams that you expect to see under Millennium, you know, the yeah, type of yeah. high calibre players. I mean, nothing against the French players that they picked up, and I understand they why they picked that good. team, mm -hmm. with them being close to home and, you know, trying to reach Bad out move. to the people that are close. But, but you know, as an organisation like Millennium, when you've got so much past history, I mean, we spoke about it before, the likes of Swanee's team under there, the likes of Matka, the likes of... Um, 
Tommy FT and under there, some veteran names within this competitive scene. It's like a top tier thing. Oh, it's a definitely a quality a standard when yeah. it comes to Millennium's brand. Definitely. Um, but anyway, guys, we've got a little quick video for you to reveal the new Millennium roster. They released it themselves, but we're going to show it you here live on the Esports Sub Show. So we're going to quickly talk to that so you can see the new roster that Millennium has picked up. That's right, guys. The Millennium roster, the old Infused roster, Marky B, is somebody, like I said at the start, I just expect would be with Infused till he, till he, he left Call of Duty. And, and, you know, fair enough to the squad. Picked up by a very strong organization, a very good organization, and I expect him to do big things as well. Tony, you look at you. I was thinking Marky B is a bit like Infused's Pato for me, isn't he? Yes. Just expect yeah, him to it, always be it. Yeah. Exactly. It would it's, be... just, it's just what it is like. But it's one of those things, like, I really, really, really quickly, because obviously we want to move on with Roster Mania. <laughs> I want to move on with the Roster Mania, but I, I want to quickly throw out there. Would you say, there's a talk about disloyalty, right? And, and, and I'll be careful with what I say here. But in football, for example, if it was to join another organization or another football club, fans who follow Infused would be like, you know, you were supposed to be loyal to us. You've been here for years. You just go for the money. Do you feel like that's the same type of thing that people might have about him? He's only going for the money and, he, and, and it's, it's all about uh, a career for him? No? I don't, I don't no, think Esports this... is like, tribal enough. Okay. Unless you're Optic or FaZe, MV maybe. Hmm. It's not very tribal, is it? It's not like football hmm. and sports like that where you've got your local team from your area and all that. Um, the biggest rivalry probably that we have is EUNA so mm. you know what I mean he's still in the EU um, I, like I say, I, it's a shame it isn't like, like that because I think it would mm. sort of help esports grow a lot if you had a bit more sort of tribalness about it but yeah I, I, I mean I personally can't imagine it being a problem I don't know about Paradox he's a smart one Yeah, I feel like you have like your Optic your Phase, your Envy and the weird thing with that is like normally when someone leaves Optic they either go they normally like go to Envy and then somehow end up on Phase, right It I don't know what how that even happens or whatever it's just kind of funny but you look at this like Millennium and Infuse, like, for years have been, like, battling each other and everything. So I do feel like maybe it's sort of like, oh, you betrayed us a little bit. But it, like Tony said, it's not to that point, right? You don't have people up in arms with pitchforks out and everything <laughs> just yet. But looking at it, I mean, it just it's just weird to me. Just that announcement coming out at the time that it did. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Well, we thought we would see roster mania changes for the teams that didn't quite make the land league, and well, that's began to happen. Uh, something we would doesn't really surprise us, and so the likes of iGame, G2, Rogue, TGC, so the Ghostu crew. Um, we've actually got a very exciting clip for you later on as well when we do talk about the land league and obviously the crazy story behind EG being able to take that place for the Ghostu crew. We'll talk a little bit about that later, but what I want to talk about is just go through some of the amateur organizations in our scene that we'd like to support here on the Esports Hub and we always have supported and getting their name out there and being able to get them on the spotlight. So let's talk about it. Five Degree opens a new organization. Potent Empire's Call of Duty team has disbanded Team Existence 7 LF1 for their Call of Duty team. Network SSU picks up a brand new Call of Duty team. Burn Esports picks up the new COD team, which is Duke and Braid, Burke and Corrupt. Senex Esports picks up Pluxy, Sobi, Matrix and Paxa. Frost Esports is going to be Gas EU, Kalsar, GTAX and Cypher N7. Bob, Sam and Jora are LF1. And Wee Man is now teaming with Shane, Desire, and Brain. Now, Shane and Brain, who used to be on Imperial alongside Sam B and Endure, but then obviously now with Bob and LF1. And the iGame, the new roster that was picked up, the 3G old roster, has split. It's now Quicker, Delio, Defrag, and Emigrant Chain. So those two are the ones I want to talk about the most, really, mm -hmm. is the fact that Wee Man is now teaming with Shane, Desire, and Brain. Now... When we last spoke about this, powder, um, Tony, sorry, we were talking about the fact that we thought Revolt may be joining Imperial, and that might be something that ends up happening. It was in the pipelines. Now, what's happened here, Tony? I don't know if you know anything about it. Now, it's, it's changed a little bit. You've got Desire, who's now in there. He's come from Epsilon. Do you know what's going on, or, or whereabouts has right, he been left? Basically, Mike, like Revolt, is the most one of the most unluckiest people in <laughs> EU esports. Like, imagine if this was like making it pro. He literally goes like that. He's, he's so close all the time and then something happens. Um, I actually DM'd him about this and said, whoever he listens to for advice, he needs to stop listening to him and just stick <laughs> with the team. Literally like five minutes ago. And 
it'll do all right. You know what I mean? Because yeah. he's a decent player, and he's just proper. Like he gets close, close, does well. People talk about it a bit, and then you know what I mean. He, it's like he makes a swap in a team, and it never works out. You know what I mean? Yeah. I know you've got to take gambles, but his gamble never works out. Bless him. Um, yeah. So yeah, he's a he's a good lad. You know what I mean? I like him. Well, let's let's bring these two teams down a little bit, Palos, because we you know. You've you've come accustomed with these players in the yeah. EU, seeing these, these these eight players that we're talking about, and I'm sure you'll have an opinion on them as well. But for me, it's about which team looks stronger, and it's really difficult to say because, okay, let's start with Weeman's team. So we've got Shane, Weeman, Desire, and Brain. Now, Desire was a player that didn't have the best start really for with mm-hmm. Epsilon. Um, a lot of players in the scene said that he was carried quite a lot. I know that was something that went around for, for a while. Uh, obviously, he ends up leaving Epsilon, and then he's in this situation where he has to find a team. Now, he's teaming alongside your favourite Wee Man. So, Wee Man's found himself a pretty decent roster. Mm-hmm. And then alongside Brain and Shane. Um, now, for me, I like the fact that he's there with Shane. So, Shane, Shane is a veteran within the scene, okay? I think Wee Man might get a lot from this personally for himself i think it'll be it's kind of like the tommy story but not the same because tommy is obviously high caliber he's been doing very successful for a long period of time and shane's had a bit of a bumpy road recently and needs a team i think around him that can help him get to where he used to be but i still think he's got the right mentality in terms of competitive card and he's got the right uh, you know he knows how to get younger talent into the right position and i think we man will benefit from that the likes of bringing desire in there though i mean how does that for you does Desire fit into this squad? It's not a place where Desire's been for a long time. You've got to cast your mind back. He he was fourth place at champs. Yeah. You know, it's... And now he's in a position where people would say he's not in the roster with the highest caliber of players. Mm-hmm. But I still think for the position that Desire's in at the minute and how his career is looking at the minute and how it's going, that this is a point where he can prove to the community that he can be once again at that top spot. Yeah, I feel like if you desire in this spot, of course, you still have that drive, right? You have that hunger. You want to be able to perform. You're going to be on a roster with Wee Man and Shane and having Shane there. I feel like 100%. Like, I'm right with you with that sort of line of thinking of having Shane mm-hmm. on this team, not only just because of the experience, but Shane's also, like you said, he's had a little bit of a rough time. Still good, right? And he mm-hmm. still has a lot that he can bring to the table. So there's going to be a team that I am looking out for just to see how they perform, right? Because I'm pretty much been a fan of even before the roster change reps i'm like these guys could do better they could do better more and more and desire is still someone i was looking at to see what he'd be able to do so Mm. looking at them in the future i feel like this might be a team that we see try and fight when it comes to cwo anaheim and we start to look at that relegation this might be a team that we have to look out for in that situation and one one thing for me as well uh, passing back to eswc when imperial went out I've never seen, I mean, you look at the whole Imperial roster, which back then when they were at ESWC was Shane Brain um, and Jora and Sam B. And for me, the person on that team when they lost that really took it the worst was Shane. And and that just proved to me he's still got that drive in him. He wants to be at the top once again. He wants to be where he used to be. Now for me, Tony, and I have to ask you this question, in that roster, you know, you talk a lot about how rosters that stick together win together. You know, it, it, it matters a lot, the whole chemistry. Now, Brain and Shane have been a duo for quite a bit so far in Infinite Warfare. I mean, will that be a factor, the fact that they're still teaming with each other and can carry that through? Yeah, right. I think between these two rosters, right, the I-game one and the Shane one, should we say, I think the Shane one was done more out of necessity or the point sort of situation and that, because okay. people come available. Uh-huh. I think the I-game one, was more because they wanted to make the change. So they went for sort of players over points, if that makes sense. Okay. Because the players they brought in um, are good players, you know what I mean? One of them, chain people, was a little bit surprised about it, should we say, but mm-hmm. apparently he's been playing well against people. Um, but they definitely made that move because they thought that would make their team stronger. And then because of that move, it then meant the other two left, it didn't maybe fit in. So that meant then made the made it available for Shane to, to make the changes, you know what I mean? So... Yeah. Out of the two, I think the I game one might be a little bit stronger just because it was that was a decision that was mentally made to improve their team. The other one's come around because two people have gone available. Mm. At the same time, I still think it will be good for Wee Man to be playing with Shane um, because he's one of those people and he's been around Wee Man's first season in the spotlight, should we say. Yeah. Um, so it's good to have someone like that holding your hand, not suggesting that he does that or anything. Um, mm. And like you said, the other two have been playing together. Well, I'd like it to do. Well, I like Shane. Shane's a nice lad. I yeah. spoke to him at events and that. I spoke to him on Twitter. Well, it's the time, same so. thing that you said earlier, Tony. I mean, yeah. this is they're still EU teams. You know, we still want yeah. to see EU teams succeed. Mm-hmm. And I think they've got the capability too. They might I think 
you look at those two teams and they're the type of two teams that may surprise. You know, they could come out and they could beat the likes of Envious or they could come out and they could get absolutely destroyed by the likes of Envious. I think, it's I think one of those that teams, game could be good. Like... Yeah, I think they, they've both got the, yeah. the, the talent where they could surprise and they could do good things and we'll have to wait and see. But just in from our live reporter from down in the amateur call of duty scene, Johnny has come through and said the Sam... Bob and Endura that we said were LF1 earlier, it's now confirmed that they've picked up Hesk. So Hesk will be their fourth player completing here that roster. Not Heard it here first. Right. Live on the Esports Hub News. <laughs> now, those, you know, those four are literally what... just play with each other anyway. Right? So, <laughs> uh, I'm not One even joking. Thing. That is the most like nailed on thing that was ever going to happen. Apart now, from that, I will... might be again. I just wish there was a way we could look at some of these amateur teams. Maybe if there was some sort of website out there floating in space. <laughs> Let me think. Oh, I've got one. I've got one. You have one? The esports Hub website, guys, is live. That's right. The esports Hub website is live. <laughs> I think Paradox has plugged it perfectly for you. Yes, we are live. All sorts of tournaments going down. Call of Duty, if you're interested. Uncharted is a brand new scene that we're touching into as well. You've got League of Legends in there. And don't forget, RuneScape ladders to come as well. But we're talking mainly about Call of Duty. There are tournaments to come. There are leagues to come. Make sure you go over there. Sign up as fast as you possibly can. Get your team names in there. Get your profile names in there. And credits and everything else will go live soon we'll link it in the chat for you make sure you pop over there and show us that you have done it as well maybe send us a tweet send us a picture that you've uploaded you got yourself an account and maybe we'll chuck you a follow back for that one as well but make sure you get involved we've got so many users getting involved so far make sure you get that og name thank you very much paradox for that plug that was there perfect perfect work but as so will pro, as the other thing is as well i want to move on to a different section and i want to move on to the fact that we're going to be talking about the global pro league that's on its way the teams have finally been decided let's just quickly throw up the screenshot for you so you can see the teams that we're going to be breaking down so let's bring up the screenshot of the cwl pro league and the teams that have been confirmed so let's start with north america then no surprise seeing Optic Gaming topping it, obviously, after previously winning the event MLG Dallas. Coming in at number two is E United. Three is FaZe Clan. Four, Team Envious. Five, Luminosity Gaming. Number six is Rise Nation. Seven, Enigma Six. And Cloud9, number eight. And finally, coming through is number nine, Evil Geniuses. Over in Europe, it's going to be number one, Splice. Two, Red Reserve. Three, Millennium. Four, Fnatic. Five, Elevate. And six, Epsilon. And then the one team making it from the Asia-Pacific region, which we weren't surprised to see is going to be mind freak now guys we're going to do this in order we'll start with the big boys first in north america we'll start to break down those and how that one fell out so from top really the top four for me is no surprise um yeah. probably the four best american teams in terms of performances recently in terms of you know caliber of players optic gaming up at the top uh united phase and envious Let's be honest, we weren't really quite surprised. that th Those positions were pretty much solidified anyway. We know those teams were going to make it pre-Dallas. Um, so congratulations to those who are making it. Then you go down to 5, 6, 7. You've got Luminosity, Rise, and E6. I mean, E6 finishing in quite a good position for them. Mm -hmm. uh, I think E6 is definitely a roster that we want to watch out for in that one. And then your final two spots is going to be Cloud9 and Evil Geniuses. So Patty P makes it in to the LAN League. He's going to be competing in there. And then Evil Geniuses. So let's talk about it then. Is there anything in there, in that top for North America, that stands out for you as a surprise, as a shock, as a team you didn't expect to make it from performances you've seen this year? So, I'll chime in first here. I feel like, just looking at the seeds and we look at recent performance, I feel like, I'll, of course, this is all based off our pro points that have been, been acquired over the past few months. If we're going by just talent, I feel like LG should be in that fourth spot over Envy. Envy hasn't looked the best. I still have faith in them. But recently, I don't know, they just seem really, really shaky. And LG, I mean, they didn't look, they went from looking really good to being like, what in the world is going on? To like, okay, now we're seeing the LG we sort of expect to see, able to get up there with your phase, your off thinking, your United. Rise has fallen off. And I hate to say that. Like, these guys were the Vegas champs. And, and this is what Tony says every weekend. Six. I've said this all the time. They're only yep. good for the first just... one and the last one. That's it. And then they literally go on holiday in between. <laughs> they don't Rise, like much. Rise dropped some. They were at number one in pro points a couple months ago. And yeah. they dropped all the way down to six. I mean, they don't win that event. I, feel, I remember um, if they didn't win Vegas, I think they would have finished in eighth. So they still would have made the Global Pro League with the pro points that they have. 
but it would have been very close. They would have been right above EG. Yeah. So that's a scary thing to think about. There's think- every possibility as well that if that like, first event wasn't oh. won, you could have seen the likes of Rise not making it. Yeah. You know, um, because if you take Vegas out of consideration, you take Vegas out and you sit and you and you go, okay, let's look at Rise as a performance this year. Not really been a good team whatsoever. Um, and it shocked me because that Rise roster stacked of some incredible talent, especially Black Ops 3 talent. You look at the, yeah. the players on that Rise roster in Black Ops 3, some of those were the top four teams. But it's not all about talent. This is what the thing, right? It's, talent's only good if talent applies itself properly. Right? The minute it doesn't, talent is useless. And people that work hard, then that will start doing better. And maybe they just do well at the start, take the foot off the gas a little, or they try really hard before the game comes out, harder than everyone else. So they get that head start. Or something. There's got to be something in it because it happens a lot. You know what I mean? There has to be a reason why they have this drop off. If I was their owners, I'd be like looking to get them a manager or something to literally mm-hmm. kick the granny out of them or something like that. You know what I mean? To get them planned because it makes no sense how they can go from winning to nearly bands. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it's just stupid. I'd, I'd be getting mental if I was their owner. Do you reckon it might come down to grinding? Because mm. let's take it in, in the early event. stages, I would say, yeah. The yeah. reason they win the first event is because you can't have grind time the game in. at that point. Yeah, mm. everyone's put the same amount of time in, roughly. But then as it goes through the year, different teams will put in more time than other teams, and that will generate success. I think Rise, the reason they win the first one is because they're on the same level as everybody else at, at the time, and it generally comes down to skill. Mm. And then as the game gradually goes on, maybe they just don't put in as much time as all the other teams do. Maybe that's the reason. Maybe they need somebody at the Rise organization to go, look... We want to win titles throughout the year. We need to start grinding. We need to get on top of this. We need to make sure that we can come back with some of these titles and not just be a team that's known for winning the first one and the last one. Um, they need big daddy notes. That's who they need. Like. Yeah, <laughs> Sergeant Rise, Major Newts. Rise Newts. <laughs> I feel like I've heard that... Like We look at Rise, it's not a team that we normally expect to make those deep runs in the online tournaments and the 2K series and everything. I've I think I heard Aqua's moving, so he'll have a more reliable internet connection. But even mm. then, this is a team that online, I have lower standards for them, unfortunately, just because of their history, right? It's nothing to the nature of the players, really talented players. I feel like a land setting, an in-person setting is really good for them. That being said, if this is if we get to the Global Pro League and we see the rise that we just saw at Dallas, I'm shaking. Like, in a mm. bad way, because that's not who you want to see. And even then, you have, like, right below them, you have E6, Cloud9, both technically upset potential teams, which the quotations for Cloud9, kind of just because of which Cloud9 you're going to get on a given day, right? And we've had the changes in the meta throughout the last few months, too. You feel like Rise and E6, I feel like, are two teams that really were kind of hurt by that, just looking at previous placings. So maybe looking at the OSA a little bit and how that's changed the game, but... Really don't know. I'm really interested to just see this story arise develop throughout the rest of the year, honestly. Right. Let's do a little bit of a touch on the teams in the Europe region then as well. So obviously we said Splice, Red Reserve, Millennium, Fnatic, Elevate and Epsilon Esports. Now for me, top four, I'm more than happy to say that, yep, they deserved it. Uh, the Fnatic team is done con- so well um throughout their time as an organization and as a team a lot of people at the start were like you know you picked up more skins <laughs> <Told you so>. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people at the start were like more skins you know Alan. scraps so you know tommy just is a, a wonder kid the things he could do with players that make them into better players is insane it's um, not gonna be good though for example tommy you could make you relevant like, oh me, you know what I mean? But it's true. it's true. You, you still have to be good. Like. Yeah, you still have to. You still have to. I I, I think Don't I've heard Tommy say before. Like yeah, and I think I've turned, heard it as well. Tommy said, you know, if you can shoot your gun straight, everyone can shoot the gun straight. Most people can shoot the gun. It's about how you play the game as a team, how you rotate on time, call outs. The very very simple things in game can be some of the reasons that separates a pro from an amateur. And I, I I've had this to my lads, right? That the difference between the different levels is the amount of mistakes you make. It isn't how well you're shooting at. It's in any sport, it's the amount of mistakes you make because good teams will capitalise on your mistakes. Mm-hmm. So a pro might make one mistake, like a top pro might make one mistake every map or one mistake every two maps, you know what I mean? A bit down, it'd be two mistakes. And as you go further, it'd just be more and more mistakes that are made. And that can be due to lack of composure, wanting to make hero plays that ain't necessarily needed to be made, um, not listening to your teammates. So if you can get four people that have the ability to shoot, 
will listen to each other and respect each other and don't make many mistakes, you're always going to do a whack, which is why I always thought they was going to do good, you know what I mean? Because you of need that, that discipline, are. right? Yeah, definitely. Definitely, and it makes a lot of sense as well. Um, Elevate and Epsilon Esports then going to come in at fifth and sixth on that one. Um, unfortunately, oh. I aren't going to see any of those EU teams that we were talking about, you know, the, the likes of iGame, the likes, you know, there's these smaller EU teams uh, making it in. Um, and I think the right team's made it. Yeah. Yeah. I would say to be honest, sure. that's the one I, that should The teams it. that deserved uh, those spots. I think with Europe, it was a lot of deserved spots. It was a lot of Epsilon these got lucky. Epsilon yeah. made what they qualified by one round. Yeah, like they got lucky. Like, yeah. oh man. Uh, that was the excellent. They need to get the same person that Rise is getting, right? I'm going to yeah. work for both of them. <laughs> I'm going to literally fly between the two countries with a baseball bat and make the players play more. <laughs> that race between Epsilon and iGame, I was watching so much because what they both got to that qualifying matchup to get into pools. Mm. Epsilon, in, no, they went like one more, I want to say. Let me see. One, two, three. Four. It was close. Okay, yeah. So they got to the qualifying. Epsilon beat Rogue, where iGame lost to G2. So then some, things go crazy. They both find their way in the loser's bracket, and Epsilon ends up losing to Era, where um, iGame was eliminated by G2. So yeah, that was in the loser's bracket. So was, both teams got to the qualifying match to get in the pool play loss but epsilon won their to make it into the champ bracket and that's what secured them that spot yeah. is absolutely ridiculous i just want to they jump to the chat in that situation yeah, yeah. that's so much stress chat real quick though uh, just because of some people getting involved in this so ramsey rampage says fanatic are the best eu team in my opinion with the best eu captain um I guess that's something I can kind of agree with. Um, definitely a dominant one. I, would you put them as the best EU team? I don't know. They're definitely up there. De- <laughs> well, them, to- but, Tony would. Splice. Come but, on. You know, you got Spl- yeah, Splice, who against Optic Gaming in, in the Dallas was absolutely insane. Um, and pff, I, I was literally screaming at my TV. I just really wanted the EU team to do it um, and, and to, the likes to see an EU team. I mean, I made a tweet that said, uh, one small step for winners bracket finals, one big step for EU Call of Duty. And, 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 uh, <laughs> <laughs> sad. Sad times for me. Sad times for hard. That was me with my inspirational tweet. Splice liked my tweet. Thank you very much, Tony. Splice liked my tweet. They thought it was inspirational. But well, lucky for you, Splice ain't in here, are they? <laughs> <laughs> no, Splice aren't, but E United are. And with that plug. We're going to do one more quick thing before we cut to MLG Dallas and talking to no other than the man Silly. It was right. EG's moment was probably one of the biggest and best moments for the lower bracket teams to make it into that pool play for CWL Pro League. And we want to show you the clip where EG were able to take down the Gosu Crow and the reaction from their team. Active Camel has the Scarab. This is beginning to look grim if you're a Gosu Crew fan. Exotic needs an angle to make his way through, but EG, only a few more seconds needed. Exotic trying to make that last second push, but Nameless is going to be there oh! in a dramatic fashion. Nameless will shut down the remaining players, as that's going to be evil geniuses who take this series and solidify that spot. They will have the final qualification position in the CWL Global Pro League. Congratulations to evil geniuses. Look at the happiness, the energy. Evil geniuses has done it. A very emotional moment for these players representing such a large organization in esports. They're able to put their name down on the Call of Duty World League.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Esports Hub Talk Show. That was the moment that EG managed to claim their spot in the CWL Global Pro League, and it was absolutely insane. Paradox beating the team that they needed to beat to, to take the spot right from them, and there's no better way to settle it in a, than in a game of Call of Duty for for that to finally be decided. I mean, it was nice to see that the spot went to them because they actually beat the team. You know, it wasn't because the Ghost Crew crew went out somewhere else or they didn't just get enough points. You know, you actually had to beat the team for the spot, and I think it was good how it ended. But that was everything for the Pro League, and we're now going to talk about Dallas, and we've got a special guest joining us it's none other than the captain of the united silly welcome to the esports of talk show oh, happy to be here Woo! we got silly on the show um let's not do anything silly though hey oh, so why? <laughs> come on come on tony come oh, on man. <laughs> come on tony where was that i needed a bit of support from me there a bit of moral support on that one no you needed sectioning not some moral support <laughs> But that's Your right, band proper comes out of a Christmas cracker, doesn't it? You know what I mean? Like, you're the dude that writes them. You just oh, yeah. I'm not just joking. A Christmas cracker. Definitely. <laughs> um, but anyway, guys, that's right. We've got a United captain Silly joining us here, and I mean. I wish I had scripted how to talk about this. Or even I think if there was a script, there's no way that we could start anywhere with what happened to Dallas. It was an absolutely insane weekend for you guys, especially on E United. I, I at first I thought you was going to make the best comeback in the entire Call of Duty history. I mean, it was it was good enough for your organization to win that event and be MLG champions. And then people were talking and debating whether it was going to be a one-off after ESWC. And you just went on to just shut up every single hater about E-United. And how, I mean, I have to ask you the question, Silly. How did it feel that you took Optic Gaming, an organization that not many teams take to, to game three, game four, never mind two best of fives. How did it feel for you when you were playing in that series? I mean, it felt great. I uh, I honestly feel like we got more props from the almost uh, double reverse sweep than we actually did from winning the last event. So it seems like a lot of uh, Optic fans have been giving us some props for that at least. So it feels great. And it was great to see as well how, how let's say, nice Optic were. You know, they were they understood that you guys had taken them to a seriously tough game. And it wasn't that they were boasting about the fact that they won the event. It was very much every single one of them was, was you know, congratulations to, to E United. Can we give them some props? Um, and, and for the likes of Formal to say that the player he enjoys playing against the most is Gunless. I mean, did he ever tell you or speak to you about his reaction to that? Uh, not really. Me and Formal don't really talk much. The most <laughs> I know about that is just watching their post-game interview. But I was kind of uh, mad at that point in time, so I didn't pay that much attention. Yeah, I mean, it, it must be so annoying. I mean, I, I losing the game 3-0 for me, I think it's worse if you lose like the, the way that United did lose. It's so frustrating yeah. to play so many games of Call of Duty, and it's literally in touching distance, and it just gets taken away from you. I mean... For the whole event in itself, silly. I have to ask you about MLG Dallas as an event. I mean, how was the event? You know, besides the fact that obviously it went the way it did. I mean, uh, the last MLG Atlanta and MLG Dallas ran perfectly. No complaints about production or anything like that. All of our matches were on time. They're doing a great job this year. Yeah, and it, it's looking like a, we had a really, really good um, viewership as well. And it's something that we talk about in Call of Duty a lot. You know, we compare ourselves sometimes to the likes of CS:GO and the likes of League of Legends and. You know, they're in the hundreds and hundreds of thousands and close to millions sometimes. But I think the finals, the Optic Gaming versus e United, especially the second best of five, we was peaking over 110,000 viewers. And that is some serious viewership for Call of Duty. Um, and, I, and I really do think that this year is looking really good. But the question is, though, Silly, where do we United go from here? So, I mean, is it crazy that you are now classed as probably the only team that can really take Optic Gaming? 
Uh, I mean, it feels great that people are labeling us that way now. I'm glad we finally got uh, some respect. We beat the online uh, warrior thing. We beat the one event wonder thing. And just hopefully we can come back and win the next event now that we know what our weak points are. And going into the Pro League then, where, are, where, where is the points in the United where you, you feel that, that that last little bit, that last little edge that's just not pushing you over the line, what is it that you, you feel that you need to work on as, as a team before the Land League starts? Strictly just our search and destroy is the only big weakness I think we have. Everything else is looking pretty promising, so just got to practice that until the league starts. For me, though, it's about the roster that you pick, that, that you team with. You know, Arsatis, Pristini, and Gunless. Now... We, wanna, we always like to have a little bit of fun here, silly, on, on, on the eSports Talk Show. And I have to ask you, in ranking order, who is your favorite teammate? One, two, three. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> damn, that's tough. Well, my number one's got to go to Gunless because he's kind of my, my duo on the team okay. because he obviously can't break up the two brothers. And then my, probably number two would probably be Arsides Alex just because he's so nice. He never has any bad vibes or anything. And third, Preston. Not that I dislike Preston or anything, but... <laughs> You know, this is how it goes. He has to get a number. He has to get a number. So, I mean, your eyes for the Pro League then. You're set on obviously taking first. I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it was anything else. But, I mean, is it Optic Gaming that is your toughest competition? I mean, are they the guys that you really worry about playing against? Or is there another team in the back of your mind that, that you, you just don't like playing against? I mean, at this point, they're probably the only team we're actually worried about for the most part. We, we did lose two games at the event that... uh. You know, we're not going to make excuses for, but nine out of ten times, I think we should beat the teams that we lost to, other than Optic, of course. Well, we've got some questions from the chat, and that reminds me, guys, make sure you do fire some questions in. If it's on social media, use the hashtag ESHUB on Twitter, or just simply put it in the chat. We are watching it, and we will ask the questions for you towards Silly. So one comes in from Radiant Quinn, uh, Silly, and it says, who would you want to team with? And it cannot be the people you're teaming with now, but if you had to pick up three people to team with, who would it be and why? Um, if I had to pick any three people, it'd probably be like any combination of the three phase guys. They're probably my favorite team other than ours. And I've I've known like I've known Clayser since I was a little kid playing COD since I was like thirteen. So me and him are good friends. Just any combination of the phase players. I've got a I, cheeky little question. Uh, I don't on, often have questions for people. Right. You have obviously smashed it this game. Sort of the lads have You've gone from maybe not being as well known to literally up there with Optic. You know what I mean? Like a massive jump, probably bigger than any team has sort of seen. Because you've been, because I've said once or twice, consistently strong. So you've obviously clocked how to play this game. You've got it now, do you know what I mean? Because you're doing so well with it. So what would you say is the secret to this game? What makes you so good at this game? Um, I mean, just teamwork. Uh we, uh, we don't have as... Uh, our communication is as frantic as everybody else's, and it's because we understand yeah. how each other plays so well, and we kind of just know how to move around the map together without even saying anything about it. Just team chemistry. Find the right people to play with and just keep grinding. I mean, that's something that's, that's, that I wanted to touch upon as well, and I think Danny3 from the chat does as well, which is the, you know, who to play with. Now, going into this, Silly, you were obviously known in the scene before this, and, and somebody that, once again, was that type of player that got close, but just couldn't quite get that final touch on it. And I think... When you picked up three players that not many people knew, it was kind of one of those things where it was a risk. I mean, a lot of people will agree it was a risk that you took, and it ended up working out for you and benefited for you. But I mean, why did you decide to team with the team that you currently have? I mean, that's what Danny3 asks as well. Uh, you know, where was it that it came from? When you sat down with the United, or how did it all end up happening? Um, actually, at the end of Black Ops 3, for that last Orlando event that ended up not happening, this was my exact team that I had for that event, too. And we had the same kind of online dominance that we had in this game, on that game, as well. But I ended up leaving them after the event didn't happen to go to United, just to be under an org. Because I couldn't find an org with them, they weren't well known. So, when my team underperformed at Vegas, I went right back to the same team I had at the end of the last game and just picked them up. So it was a bit, basically it was a lot of like you played with these guys before. Yeah. You know how these guys work. I mean, this is once again going back to what you said, Tony, about teams with structure, about teams that oh, played with each other, sticking along generates success, and that's obviously ended up working for Silly and and, and the United as a, as an org. Uh, I know Burns, and he's a he's a great person, oh. and he's really like down to earth. But I mean, United as an organization, what's it like playing for them? I mean, they really just you know they care about their players a lot. Unlike uh, other organizations have been under that only care about you know their teams overall placings, they actually. They treat us like family to United, so best work I've been under, period. And and that definitely, I mean, does that make you feel 
because in my eyes personally, like you know, if you're playing under a big organization, an organization that literally throws down your throat, that they want success, 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 and it's the reason why you're on the team, I kind of get the feeling that as a player you'd feel quite pressured. So I mean, the yeah. fact that they're so lenient and so chilled with you, do you feel like going into your games you don't, you know, you're not expected to to finish first? You know, you're just expected to play well. Yeah, I mean, they just expect us to play well, you know, just like we didn't do well at ESWC. We didn't we didn't hear anything about it from our, or they weren't worried about it or anything. They're like, oh, you know, you know, bad event, blah, blah, blah. Just walk it off, you know. So, yeah, not really much pressure coming from the org at all. Definitely makes us play better. No. All right, well, I'm going to start firing some questions and a little bit of discussion around us while you're joining us today because we want to talk about City of Dallas a little bit more. But Tony Paradox, I mean, is E United now classed as the second best team in North America? I'm going to say yes, and that's not even just because Silly is here. <laughs> 100%. It, it, you he know, says, even, wait, whoever we've got on, they're the best oh, team. Okay. Except even, <laughs> even looking at that, I do sort of want to know, what's the team chemistry like when you're down in that series? Like, when you're down 2-0, right? Like, what happens? How do you guys get it together? You just, like, sort of brush it off and then go into it fresh? Um, I mean, we we honestly kind of know when we're about to go down. We always we start off slow in almost every series, and when we get two of our you know worst maps, the first two maps are like, all right, guys, we lose these two maps, and we got our best up lane, we got our best hard point, and then <laughs> it's game right. five. So we just go a map at a time, and just I love the fact that you off. go into it going, yep, well, we're probably gonna lose this first two, but you know, <laughs> when whatever. It, when it comes to optic or something like that, I mean, you just gotta think like that sometimes. Yeah. I mean, that's some confidence, if you ask me. The fact that they they know, you know. Yeah, we're going to lose these first two, but we're going to take the next two. <laughs> I mean, come on. Who cares that we're 2-0 down? Um, some insane confidence. And, you know, that's always been a thing for me, which se which separates amateurs from professionals, is the ability, composure. It's such a big word in Call of Duty. Composure is one of the things that made Optic Gaming one of the best teams in the world. Because how many times have we seen Optic Gaming go down and they've just been able to bring it back, whether it's a hard point game, whether it's a search and destroy, that they're, I think, who were they 5-2 down to? Was it, it was actually United, wasn't it? Were they 5-2 down to you? There, we were actually up 5-1, uh, and they five came one. back and won that map against us. So, yeah. there, so there's the composure, the, the composure talk. Uh, and there's, there seems to be, there's a little bit of like a rivalry building between the United and Optic Gaming for me. Uh, obviously, you had the likes of Pristini stood up, and he's doing all this to the Optic fans, like, I don't care what you think. Uh, Gunless was the same. Arsis, I saw you on the end, silly. You're like, I don't want to get involved with this. I know what the Green Wall's like. like I'm <laughs> not getting involved with this. Oh, yeah, I'm not no more hate for me. on the way back to the hotel room. That's not happening. Um, but obviously, you know, those three players, really a lot of energetic, and then you've got the likes of um, this event where when you guys come out, the Optic fans are booing you. But I mean, that's just the you know, Optic fans will do that. They did it to phase as well. I know that Crim6 made a tweet about it, but it seems like there's this rivalry being built. And the, it, soon, Paradox, we may see the new E Classico where it's going to be E United going up against Optic Gaming. Um, nothing against Envious, obviously. I just feel like this, this, this is all building up. And I just really want to see this happening at Champs as well. I mean, imagine these two teams, Dude. Paradox, battling against each other at Champs. You take that crowd from Champs last year, too? Yeah. Oh, man. That's absolutely ridiculous. And speaking of which, like, what was it like in Atlanta when you guys ended up winning and sort of that reaction and everything that came out? Um, I mean, it, it was a first event win for all of us, so we're all just shocked first off that our first event together we came out and won and we kind of were just more excited that we we're able to silence as many people as we did you know because anytime we do something good like like uh pre mlg atlanta it was just oh online warriors blah blah you guys want to do this on land so as soon as we walked up there to grab our trophy that's the first thing we're thinking about just everybody just talking about us being online warriors and everything mm -hmm. and it must be like because the feeling of proving somebody wrong is like amazing. We can all agree with that. Yeah, when you prove someone wrong, it's, it's amazing. So he's just doing it like three times in a couple of months. Like he's proven <laughs> like so many different things, so many people wrong, and it's just going and going and going. It's just a ball of success. Um, but I want to move on to talk a little bit more about the, the CWL Dallas and the, and the event. Um, and I guess you could kind of have an involvement in this one as well, because we want to talk, Silly, about how good the Europe and the APAC teams are. OK, we've always been talking about it. How good are these European teams? You know, they're getting closer and closer. It's it's a matter of time, surely, till an EU team does finish first place at an MLG event or, or does something absolutely insane. And I think for me, it's Spice. Um, that roster is just stacked with talent, for European talent. And I really did think that they would take Optic Gaming. But for, for you as a player, United, when you come up against the Euro European team, I mean, do they phase you? Do, you? do you guys kind of think, oh, we'll just brush them aside and then we'll play against NA teams? Like, how does it feel for you, Silly, when you come up against some of the best European teams? 
I mean, uh, our, I believe our first match at the event, we almost lost to uh, Millennium or Infused. We went game five with them. That was a really close game. We were actually the entire time, the you know, the main EU team we're worried about is Splice. But uh, we were kind of hot when we played Splice, and we actually had like a really uh, one-sided series against them for once. It wasn't back and forth like it usually is. So happy about that. I mean, we, we actually, uh, the most trouble we had this event was with Optic. So. Mm. Well, for, for European teams as a whole for you, though, I mean... Like I say, do they do they bother you at all? Like, are... uh, other than other than Millennium and Splice, I mean, when you see them in your side of the bracket, you're obviously a little worried about it. By it, as as uh, the other teams in the EU, not so much. I haven't really played most of them, so just those two. Awesome. I mean, for us though, guys, I mean, Splice had a fantastic performance. You know, yeah. I really, really did think that they were going to be Optic Gaming, and that would have been a, such a big step for EU competitive Call of Duty, just to, to not. The likes to have a EU team knock a, a massive North American team down to losers, and how different it may have made the situation that United end up finding themselves in if, if that had happened. Yeah. Anything could happen. Um, but I mean, for you, Paradox, you know, you watch a lot of, of the EU teams and follow them quite well since being on the show. I mean, for you, are EU teams standing out a little bit more, or are they just not making the cut? I feel like we're finally starting to see the splice that a lot of us have wanted to see for the entire year, pretty much. Um, with regard to the rest of the teams, like, of course, on the show, Tony's always talking about Fnatic. We always bring Fnatic up, and they have good upset potential, I would say. And then Millennium, or fortunately, uh, formerly Infused, is a team that always seems to show up, maybe sometimes have an off event here or there. But I feel like that is a team that you have to look at in the back of your mind. When we start to get to, like, Red Reserve, and we start to be able to, like, Elevate, I don't know what's going on with them right now. Of course, Red Reserve had a really good loser's bracket run when in dallas but they didn't look the best in pools and honestly you have elevate they won what five and 15 in map count in dallas that's not good and i expect them to bounce it back at least a little bit when we get to global pro league and it's the apac teams as well tony the, the obviously we saw mind freak being able to do what they do best and just topping it with kind of not really surprised at all when tainted minds got the the group that they did which is incredibly unfortunate for them but i mean it, it, in terms of apac region for you is it is it might as well be the mind freak region or what I think this is going to make it even worse because they're now going to come over here and play with, like, not come over here, over to America and play with all the good teams and everything. And they're going to go back with better quality of practice, a lot more money. Um, so then that starts to become, even if another good player comes through, they can just do a Man City, can't they? Just take that player off of other teams. Yeah. If they use I this agree. properly, they can just dominate, in my opinion. Well, this is just the thing, because isn't of the head it? Like, start, yeah, I understand what you're saying as well, because they're going to go over now and get the practice on a daily basis against the best teams in Call of Duty. And it's it's going to go two ways for me. Mindfreak are either going to get absolutely dominated and are going to be so... like I don't think they will. Like, not all the way. I don't think I don't they're going to get absolutely dominated, no. Nah. But, but I don't think they're going to like Game 4 and Game 5. Yeah, yeah, but I I'm, I'm just looking at like the, 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 the two ways it yeah. could go. I mean, they could get dominated and then they, the team splits and then Mindfreak, nah. you know... It's just bad room for them. Or, like you said, they get good practice in, they come back, and they're just an even better team than the rest of the teams in the APAC region. Even if they split, where are they going to go? There's only two teams, and yeah, one for a lot better. So it ain't like you're going to split and go elsewhere. Like I don't I think they'd intentionally split unless they had to. Like yeah. I know Chance brought up a really good point and said that, you know, what if Mind Freak ends up getting a team house near Columbus, right? So they just come over early and just stay there for the entire duration of the Global Pro League. Yeah, true. Yeah. So you have all these teams coming in from all the different pools, and they can scrim them, so there's nothing holding them back. I feel like that would do really well for them going forward and everything. I really want to see what the ceiling is on Mind Freak and see what can happen, Like, because they do have that upset potential when it comes to these international matches. So I'm really excited to actually see what pool they're put into. Well, we want to talk about it as well. and. A lot of people have titled this event as the greatest Call of Duty event that we've ever had. I mean, I'm going to ask the question out to all of you. It, Paradox, is it a yes? Is it a no? What, I feel like one of the best. Statement. The one very of the best, statement. yeah. Like, the production was fantastic. We had absolutely great games. I would say one of the best grand finals I have ever seen, hands down, without a doubt. Mm. Um, I feel like this is just going to be one of the history books for years to come, honestly. How are you feeling, Tony? With my hands. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those moments. I know, no, do you know what? Like, one of the best things for me for Call of Duty for a while was X Games. See, when they first had Call of Duty at X Games, 
I like that because it sort of put it on a bigger stage sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, I think they said one of the best finals. I really did. I ain't just saying it to Z, you know, I wouldn't do that. Um, <laughs> I was actually in bed. Right, I had a laptop on my lap. The wife next to me, she had work the next day trying to sleep. And I'm going, like, put my lap. <laughs> and honestly, I'm, not, I'm like a 37 year old man, you know what I mean? And I'm sitting there getting excited about it. Like, what's all this about? Um, yeah, so yeah, it's going to be more. good. Yeah, but that's it, isn't it? I mean, it's always getting bigger and hopefully it's always going to get better. Because uh, mm. then finally I can make some There's money moments out. like this, though, which us as the console community, um, you know, we get belittled a lot by PC and CS and stuff. But it's moments like this and, and finals like this where we can sit back and we can go, yeah, we can be an eSport. There is an eSport in Call of Duty. We can be at the top level. We create moments like this. We create tournament moments. The storylines now. I mean, how many storylines do we have going rivalry, to mate. Yeah, rivalry. And Aix That's... makes a very good point where he says, the reason Call of Duty is not quite where it is is because there's no screaming rivalries. There's no, you know, you're going into it and this guy wants That's to be this guy. That's why I liked it when they because, went up at the Optic fans because yeah. I was like, yeah, we need this. Like, too many people want to be everyone's best mate and in football yeah. or America or anything like that, there's a rivalry and that rivalry brings, as we were talking about earlier, like a tribal instinct, you know what I mean? And that helps build it because you want to support your team and that. So far, it's literally everyone just wants to be in Optic. Right. Well, let's set it up then, silly. Fun. Next time you play Optic and they all go to fist bump at the end of the game, miss all of them on purpose <laughs> and then turn around and oh don't walk away. That's oh, what you need to do. Go to around. You jump. Just, just like, way. <laughs> that would not be a fun walk back to the hotel. Yeah, no, definitely <laughs> not. <laughs> Can you imagine if he went to like, they went to touch uh, knuckles each other and he just went, nope, ah, it's oh. in a bit. <laughs> but, uh, no, some... So rivalry is definitely being made from your teammates, though. I mean, like Tony said, the fans thing was one thing that really rivaled the community up. And I think people wanted to see the rematch. You know, the caster spoke about it, saying that we need this rematch between United and Optic. You know, another one to, to see where it about it goes. Um, but I think now we're setting ourselves up for number three, aren't we? So United took the first one, Optic Gaming took the second one. Now we're going into the third one. Maybe those two teams will meet again to see what will happen at that. Um, it'll be in the Pro League most likely, though. But uh, I want to just quickly jump to the chat, see if there are any more questions coming in for you. Um, let's see if we can find anything in here. Tony, the chat's been very fun. lively today. Yeah, it has been lively, but with some, some stuff in it, I'm just like, okay. So Molly's joined us, by the way. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Like that oh, happened God. before that. We just had hashtag we want Frenchie just going off like the whole time. <laughs> hashtag Newt's his daddy. <laughs> what can I say? Uh, we've got something else coming in here. So Ramsey Rampage just listed his top three EU teams. Splice Fanatic Millennium. Is that what everyone else agrees with, really? I mean, mm. do you say silly? They're the three I'd, best. I would put Elevate in their. Uh... When they're playing well in my top yeah. three over Fnatic, by the other two, yeah, definitely. Tony, I think. Calm down, Fnatic. No, no, that's <laughs> right. right. I like reading, right? so I'm a little bit biased, right? You know, I'm proper pals of reading. Um, I just don't think they're all they're not clicking at the moment, and I think that's what it is with the change and that. I mean, I think they've changed because of that, made a change because it didn't feel right, and I think that's what it is. It just needs to feel right for them, and when it is, they'll be good. You know, what I mean. Reed has been at a good level and he's shown like that it can turn up for certain games, but they're just not consistent. And I think they need to find that this is going to work out for him. Reed and Mate have obviously played with each other a lot before, so I'm assuming it will work out for him. But I think they need a little bit of time to bed in. They haven't taken it as easy as some, you know what I mean? As as he said earlier, it's about teamwork and that in this game, and I don't think they've got that yet. Um, I feel like, yeah, when they, they start to gel. Yeah. yeah, when they gel, I think they'll be strong, you know what I mean? But I, I think it's going to take maybe another event. Oh, but you know, I mean, or a bit of time in the league, sorry, uh, for it to actually to, to sort of gel for him. Speaking you know, of the I'll league, then, bit. speaking of the league, while we've got silly here, I want to get a few predictions before we do close out the show. So, um, Paradox, we'll start with you. I'm going to say NA EU, okay? Well, without the Pro League in general, okay? Who's going to finish first? Is it is it all separated? Like, there's an EU finisher or anything like that? No, it's just the whole no, league, right? It's, it's um, the whole league. league. Who's going to finish first? Oh, man. Um, <laughs> Actually, I'll tell you what, then. Let's make it more interesting. Top three. Okay, so top three for the Pro League. Who do you think it's going to be? Now, this is an incredibly hard question. I, while everyone's having a think, guys, in the chat, 
Let us know in the chat. Who do you think is going to be the top three? Remember, all these th teams are thrown into it. Well, actually, really quickly, just throw the graphic up for me, please, production. Down here. Throw the graphic up so the guys know what it is, which teams are in. Throw those up so they can have a look. And then let us know in the I chat. Can who you think is the top three. <laughs> How many more bosses? <laughs> production down the year. Throw it up, production. Throw it up. Throw it up. I have like I have go. like two separate top threes, but obviously okay. I would put my team in that top three somewhere. But okay. I mean, maybe us, Optic, and Spice, or us, Optic, and Phase. Probably I would say would be in the top okay. three finishers. I 100% agree with that. Honestly, like I do, right now, I don't see it going any other way. Like, maybe you have LG sneak in there, but they really yeah. have to improve their search and destroy for that mm -hmm. to happen. So, yeah, that those are the four teams right there. Optic, United, FaZe, and Spice in no particular order. Okay. Tony? I agree with it, but ain't it nice that there is an EU team in that top four? Yeah, it is. Because that's what yeah, it always happens, nice. you know what I mean? Yeah, the and Americans like, have done us proud, Tony. No, I'm not just saying that, but what have always <laughs> happened, you know what I mean? Like, I like it, I appreciate it. I hope, you, um, I, you know, I hope you United do well. I, I like it. I, I get bored of the same, you know what I mean, of the status quo. That, that's one of the things for me as well, I think, from a lot of people, is, this, this, is the whole, there's not one team just dominating every weekend. Um, yeah. and, and I think the only reason why Call of Duty wasn't boring back then when it was Optic is because it was Optic. You know, they've got this massive fan base, so there was loads of people watching them, um, and they were enjoying the fact that Optic were winning on a daily basis. But I think one of the things that makes sports and esports in general is the fact that we don't know who's going to win. Um, you know, you could pick top three teams, you could pick top four teams, but I think with this game in, in itself, it, it, with Infinite Warfare, it's so incredibly inconsistent that anybody can win on any given day. And I think that's what makes this game, in, in a way, quite fun. I mean, obviously, there's a lot that comes down to skill, there's a lot that comes down to team chemistry, and there's a lot that comes down to work, which has been proven from the likes of Optic and United by the time, you know, constantly making it towards those high end areas. Um, for me, top three, I, I'd probably have to go, um, I think I'm going to go Optic and United. And then I think it is going to be in a new team, but for me, it's a toss up between Splice and Millennium. Millennium. Um, sure. yeah. I think Millennium have yet to hit the ground running. I think there's still a lot left in that team mm -hmm. that can cause a lot of upsets. I still think they could take some of the big boys down. Do you know what's interesting as well? None of us have mentioned Envious. Now, they haven't hit their stride reason, yet. I don't. I mean, I don't you're looking know at a world champion. You're looking at, what, a team of world champions. I, I definitely feel like they're they're one of the teams that's going to uh, make their their big run around champs time mm -hmm. later in the year. Like think same thing, same thing with like J Cap and you know I, I feel like he's always better towards the end of the year. They just, yeah. as soon as they learn the game over, you know, as soon as they adapt everybody else's play style, they'll be a top four team. Definitely around champs time, I would say. I would say stage two champs is when we'll see. Yeah, when you really get up there. We've got some really interesting stuff in the chat, so let's go for it then. So, uh, X Swaption says E United Optic and Phase. John P. Casting says top three is going to be OG, Cloud9, and Fnatic. Justin? Oh, that one's. Uh... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We've got Molly Cod saying Optic, E United, and Splice. Uh, Ramsey Rampage says E United, Optic, and Splice as well. Uh, I'm George says EG, Mind Freak, and Epsilon. I mean, anything can happen, <laughs> you know. <laughs> if that happens, well, we'll have to wait and see. That sounds like uh, a Jack prediction. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's be honest, though, Tony. I'd have put Tainted Minds in there, even though they hadn't made it, if it was me. You would have done something. Like, you would have got the names yeah. on. You would have made up an organisation that wasn't even there, mate. I'm surprised you didn't put Bulldog in, just for the... <laughs> mate, I, I'm you... too big for that. Fuck, you need <laughs> Two million dollars or whatever. I won't even get out of bed for that. I got my, I got my grand and half winners check from Insomnia down here, mate. <laughs> uh, going through a little bit more. Um, Optic E United and Spliced uh, and Spliced from Live Customs. And yep, that's everything coming in from the chat. So guys, thank you very much for getting involved. But it's going to be everything here from the Esports of Talk Show. We're going to begin to wrap it up now. Thank you very much for coming on, Silly. Thank you, yeah, thank, thank you. Thank and, you guys uh, for having me. Yeah, and hopefully we can get you on a little bit more on in the future as well to talk about yeah, what's going on in the league. Uh, and wish you the best of luck going into the league as well. Um, you guys look yeah. ready for it.
your team looks ready and uh, you know that rivalry that e-classico will become a thing even if it's the esports or e-classico and we make it a thing i don't care it's going to be really going to push that in your yeah, jacket yeah. really marketing oh, all sorts of advertisement branding <laughs> i'm going to put banners up you turn the name a lot it's going to be on every single video from now on but anyway right. tony's joined us as well thank you very much tony Sweet. for being Thank a part of the show again it's alright mate it's me Tony thank you very nice. much Paradox as well later guys yeah. part of this thanks for everything thanks yeah. very much for, for joining us on the show so that's it guys we're going to be going now so thank you very much for paying attention to the show no he's gone silly has gone already but thank you very much for paying attention to the show he's contemplate come on yeah, yeah he's got contemplate he's, he's got a lot to grind for he's got a big land league coming up I guess as Tony said not that big but we know it's no, big no. anyway no, no, <laughs> next no, no, not that important <laughs> Next event on the CWL calendar, though, is Birmingham Insomnia. It's only 21 days away where we'll see those see teams. There. See Tony there. We'll see me there. We'll see Pat. Well, I wish he was there. I wish he was there. Like, I wish. Can't we, I wish can't we get him casting or something? We just sneak him in. That'd be awesome. <sighs> we sneak him in. I mean, I'm going to have my passport to him, too. So, like, hey, possible. How can we sneak him in? I don't know. I mean, I'll buy him a ticket. You don't need to sneak him in, but like, <laughs> how poor do you think we are? We kind of fall between like, almost to get him a ticket. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Anyway, it's the end of the show, guys. So we're going to go now. Thank you very much for tuning in. And peace.